Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Old habits, they just they die hard. I hear myself, Jim. Sorry about that. All right, there we go. Jim is Jim is uh, Jim is here, everyone. How you doing, Mr. Valley? There I am. Hey, hey look hey, at this guy. Hot damn. Yeah, man, you look great. Why, well, thank you. I feel good. What's going on? Give us a health update. Uh, things are good. You know, I do physical therapy a couple of times a week. I went and saw my uh, doctor who oversees the physical therapy, and he said that I'm exceeding expectations, so that's good. There's a few other things going on, but as far as I'm walking a lot more, I'm less tired, so things are coming along good overall, I think. You know, you uh, posted something, or your wife did the other day, where you're now uh, 140 pounds with a 29-inch waist. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't help but notice that I am 140 pounds (laughs) with a 28-inch waist. And uh, the point of this is, uh, you have those stats, and they think that you should be rehabbed. Yeah, well... The good news is, is you and I can swap clothes now. Yes. You can share clothes. But it was con- concerning to me. Like, should I be rehabbing? No, I think you have much more muscle tone and, um, you know, I don't have a lot of muscle tone. Well, you're going to get more every day, Jim. We're going to get yeah. you, we're going to get you, uh, under those weights here pretty soon. That's right. Yeah. Now I also was, was, uh, I, I could have gotten this wrong, but when you were, when you were very sick and I think that you had, uh. I don't, I don't remember when it was, but I was uh, Facebooking with your wife, and she said, I could have sworn that she said something like, they're starting to figure out what what, what happened to you and why everything went so awry with your autoimmune disease. And she seemed to suggest that they had some sort of idea where they could maybe prevent it from happening or, or next time something happened, they could prevent it from getting... Is that true, or did I just misread that? Well, what the issue was is with the whole COVID thing, um, you know, a lot of the hospitals were very difficult to get into. And every six months, every so often, I need to get an infusion of this drug. And because of the COVID situation, I didn't get my scheduled infusion. So that was probably part of the problem that I see. led to the uh, recurrence of my autoimmune disease that caused it to flare up. Um, you know, just kind of a perfect storm of everything happening. I was misdiagnosed with um, laryngitis, but it was actually PJP pneumonia. And I think that kind of was a domino that triggered a lot of things. So, so you, so they feel that as long as you can keep getting your infusions every six months, yeah. like hopefully we won't have this problem. Exactly. And you've also been fully vaccinated against COVID. I've got both my vaccinations, so we're good to go. As a matter of fact, you know, my wife is a superstar in the travel industry, and uh, with travel opening back up, her business is really picked up, and she gets invited to different events and things. So she's got a work thing in florida and she doesn't want me to be home alone, so i'm gonna travel with her may 5th blood and guts oh i am going to be at daly's place so if you're gonna be there come on by and say hello and uh you know i'd love to meet any observer subscribers who are gonna be there for blood and guts which coincidentally they did not name after me they could have but they didn't but may 5th i hope to see a bunch of people there that'd be fun now this will be if i recall correctly uh you'd know better than i your first major trip since getting out of the hospital so you've got like uh what do you got here uh uh, three weeks to train yeah uh, for this trip are you are you ready Well, that's what happened is I posted a picture of me in rehab joking, I'm getting ready for Tokyo Dome, you know, because that's the big event. And uh, I took a nap that day and I wake up and my Twitter is blown up and I look at it and Tony Khan has tweeted at me, well, you look like you're in shape right now for Daly's Place. And that's just kind of how it happened. And I wasn't going to go to wrestling and subject my wife to it, but... 
when Tony Khan tweets at you, oh. and it's blood and guts. And We're going to have to find go. out what your wife thinks about this blood and guts, Jim. It's been a very controversial topic. She's, um, I would say, <laughs> the stereotypical female reaction that Dave Meltzer talks about. But, you know, my wife has seen wrestling at Differiaki in Japan, which no longer exists. She's seen Misawa wrestle. She's been to Arena Mexico, Ribera Steakhouse, Killer Cons. She's got some wrestling cred. So this will just add to her wrestling legacy. Hey, Jim, how's it been getting back on the horse? You did the show with Dave, and now you're you're back doing the shows with Fumi, the Pacific Rim podcast that are up on the site. How's it been getting back in the podcasting game? No, it's good. You know, I mean, I want to do it. You know, I think I can do it. You know, my issue is that I think, obviously, people are happy to hear me, and, and I love all of you and appreciate all that from the bottom of my heart sincerely. But I think that... With my voice the way it is, I worry that if I come back too soon, people will grow tired of this and not want to listen to my voice in this condition. So I think for the time being that less is more until I get it back to a more pleasing sounding voice. At least that's my thought on it. Maybe people have some other thoughts, but that's just kind of my general feeling on it. You know, it's uh, it's too bad that uh, Jericho turned babyface because he can't heal on you now when you go down there for blood and guts. That's true. But you never Don't worry, know. Max can. Yeah, I guess Jericho's probably uh, MJF that... might have a word or two about you. Yeah, you never know what he does. Well, we got uh, WrestleMania coming up this weekend, which uh, you are not going to, uh, nor am I. Uh, but we have lineups for both of these nights, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say a match, and then we're going to say who we think is going to win. Or, obviously, if there's an angle or a storyline or whatever. So, uh, let's just kick it off because we've got two nights to talk about here. Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. I will start this one by saying that Bianca Belair is going to win this title. I'll be disgusted if this does not happen. Jim, your thoughts? Yeah, considering it's going on last, the first night, one would think that they've got to be coronating Bianca Belair and that's good you know WWE has been criticized for not making new stars and it seems like they're really making an earnest attempt with Bianca Belair they've had the best build-up of any match on Wrestlemania this year which is not saying much but uh, yeah Bianca Belair Mike. Yeah, I, love, I love everything about this, you know, with the main eventing. And, and, look, they had stumbles coming out of the gate with Bianca and Bailey, which I didn't think they could screw up. And this hasn't been beautiful either. But like Jim mentioned, it's been one of the better builds they've had. And it's Bianca's time. She's a star. She should be one of the faces of that company going forward. So give her the win. We have got Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre for the title, and I still predict that this will open the WrestleMania show. I believe it will be the first match in the ring. I think he's going to have a great reaction. I think he's going to win the title in front of people, which he was supposed to do last year. Drew McIntyre is my pick. Jim? You know, I agree with you, but it sure feels like they're trying to turn Bobby Lashley babyface. And when you look... At Bobby Lashley, with his muscles and his physique, he's everything that Vince wants in a top guy. And yeah, Drew McIntyre may win, but I think this is part of a Bobby Lashley babyface turn in the future. Hmm. Mike. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see Bobby Lashley continue to be focused on. I would hate to see him and MVP broken up, but uh, whatever they decide to do, I just hope that Lashley stays in the mix, and I would love to see him hold on to the belt here. But Drew winning the title in front of fans, especially Brian in the way that you mentioned with it opening the show, I can absolutely see that. So bookending the show with title changes, you know, with with great reactions, I think are going to come out of both. I think would be a perfect thing for this show. We have got a Bad Bunny and Damian Priest versus The Miz and John Morrison. And I think all you need to know about this match is uh, Bad Bunny didn't even get rolled up from behind to lose that title. He just gave it up. He traded it. So they ain't beating this Bad Bunny. I would presume that either Bad Bunny pins The Miz after Damian Priest hits The Miz with something so Miz can transfer the heat to Priest, or, I mean, we just do some sort of double pin situation. But, uh, yes, I would uh, say that Bad Bunny and Damian Priest are winning this match. Jim? 
Yeah, you got two goals in this match. One to highlight Bad Bunny for Sports Center or MTV or TMZ, and the other is to make a star out of Damian Priest. And it's going to be curious to see where Damian Priest goes next. A U.S. title? Um, what do they do with him? You know, for a long time, I was really happy with his development on NXT. It was slow and steady, was winning the race, and now they've really rushed him. And he looks great. He may be ready, but I don't know. I don't have a lot of faith in WWE creative going forward. But, yeah, I think we'll see Bad Bunny win with some sort of botched finish by the bad guys, you know, hitting someone with a foreign object and Bad Bunny covering. All right, we'll get Mike's thoughts after the break. Stick around, everybody. Wrestling Observer Live. Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper Vivi, Jim Valley. And before we get Mike's prediction on this Bad Bunny match, like, I. I yeah. People are so angry that other people watch TV. <laughs> like, this is a level of insanity I cannot even fathom. Why are you mad about this? This is when I start thinking about what's going on in these people's like lives. They're so angry to learn that people still watch television. Why is this a source of anger? Anyway, your uh, your thoughts on this Bad Bunny match? Most important thing is Damian Priest comes out of it a bigger star, and even if Bad Bunny is the one who ultimately gets the victory here over The Miz or Morrison, and it should be The Miz with the way this whole thing has gone. Bottom line is, what does Damian Priest go on to? Hopefully it's something good. We'll talk about it later on. I can easily see Sheamus winning the U.S. title. I think that would be a perfect thing for Damian Priest. He and Sheamus absolutely hammering each other. Sheamus helping Damian Priest along to whatever WWE ways need to be known for him in, in a main event position, whatever needs to be done. I, I think that would be great. So that's the direction I'm going here with Bad Bunny and Damian Priest getting the victory. This person here says only old people watch TV. Are there no cable and network charts to look at? Dude! All right, hey, we got the New Day, AJ Styles and Omos. <laughs> I actually don't know who's going to win this match. I mean, you would think AJ and Omos, but, I mean, it's it's the debut of Omos. You know, I don't know how good the guy is. They say he's gotten better. Uh, do you want to take the risk of making them tag team champions and having them wrestle all the time? I mean, Omos has never had a match before. Is he going to be a regular or not? I don't know. I am going to just say that the New Day wins, AJ gets pinned. Jim. Um, that's plausible. It is WrestleMania, and you want the New Day to be successful. But, you know, there's always a surprise where it's not an obvious thing. So I think I'm going to go with AJ and almost. Yeah, I'm going to go with AJ and almost too because, I mean, as long as AJ's healthy, he's the one that's going to carry that team. It's just my hope that when we do see almost debut, he does not have mauve ring gear. They're like the new Colossal Connection. Smob ring gear. So we got Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon in a cage match, which of course is built around the fact that Shane McMahon keeps calling Braun dumb. Um, like in a normal universe, Braun Strowman wins, okay? But I have seen many Shane McMahon matches that build to the point where Shane McMahon should lose, and yet he wins. So uh, I am going to... Uh, I'm going to predict Braun Strowman, but I'm also not going to be surprised in the least if Shane McMahon wins his cage match. Um, I hate this feud. I think everybody hates this feud. And the fact that it's so miserable makes me think by WWE standards, this feud must continue. So in order for it to continue, Shane McMahon will find a way to eke out a win. There'll be some stunt bump and Shane will get his arm over Braun Strowman and an unconscious or weary Shane McMahon will somehow pin Braun Strowman. Unfortunately, this feud will continue. 
Oh, my God. Maybe this is how we can bring back Raw Underground, where it's got to be settled in the pit or, or something like that. I, I'm hoping Braun gets the victory here. I think he overcomes Jackson Riker and, and Elias and, and Shane and everything else. Whatever else happens here, uh, Braun, I, I'm, at least I'm hoping, overcomes all of this and gets the win. I do love that this is a cage match, and there's discussion about how we're going to get it to continue on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, well, it's ridiculous. And interference. We have Cesaro versus Seth Rollins, built around Seth being angry that he was swung in a circle. Cesaro really should win this match, and I actually think that Cesaro is going to win this match. But as in all of these matches, I mean, I, I would not be surprised in the least if it went the other way, because of course it would. Uh, your thoughts, Jim? You know, there's always a few upsets again every year, and it seems like... Cesaro should win. Um, so I will go with Cesaro. And, you know, hopefully one of the things with WrestleMania this year, with two days and only a handful of matches each night, I hope that means that some matches like this will get some more time. What it probably means is lots of skits and lots of gaga and sports entertainment in between each of the matches to take up time. But we'll see what happens, but probably Cesaro. We have got Lana and Nate. Oh, sorry, Mike. Go ahead. I, <laughs> I, I, just just I, say, uh, this match is going to kick ass, uh, and I, I'm actually going to go with Seth Rollins here getting the victory. So Seth Rollins, go. why? Yes, I, I'm going with Seth here. Look, he, he lost last year, and... He comes back, and we've. He came back in the same character that I'm not happy about. There were a zillion ways I think you could have brought him back, especially as a baby face. And unless you're going to do Cesaro and Roman Reigns, which I could see being possible if you think Roman Reigns is going to win on night two. Other than that, to me, it's like you better do something with Seth Rollins here and get him back up to the upper echelon, you know, as much as you can with this gimmick, because otherwise, I mean, what's he going to do? I mean, I just I don't see going forward here again, unless it's Cesaro and Reigns. Why would you beat Seth Rollins here? Who, again, you got to start getting him jump started and ready to go at some point, right? We've got Lana and Naomi versus Dana and Mandy versus Liv and Ruby versus Natty and Tamina versus, I believe, Carmella and uh, what's her name? Uh, Billy Kay for these. Uh, what are these for? They are for the. Oh, my God. Oh, it's a number one contenders match. <laughs> they get a title shot on night two. You're excited, aren't you? I, I mean this in the nicest way possible. Uh, who cares? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Is there one team in here that's like, oh, we're going to get a great match if they win? I mean, I, 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 Lana and Naomi. We're going to feel the glow on night two. Jim? <laughs> I hope you're right. They're doing stuff with Billy Kay. So maybe I'm going to go with uh, who's Billy Kay's partner? Carmella. I'll go with Billy Kay's team. Yeah. I'll actually, I'm, I'm going with uh, with Ruby Wright and Liv Morgan, who actually would have the best match, I think, uh, that you can put together there. And, hey, why not? Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler against them on night two. Th that'll work for me. All right, so on night two, we do have Nia and Shayna versus the winner of the tag team turmoil match. Actually, you know what? I got to go back. It oh, is, on. obviously, Carmella and uh, Billy Kay. Because oh, then we do Carmel and Billy Kay versus Nia and Shayna. Reginald turns on Nia and Shayna so that Carmella and Billy Kay win the titles with Reginald returning to Carmella. There you go. Billy sure. Kay as one half. <laughs> Billy Kay and Carmella as your tag team champions. Remember when Sasha and, and uh, Bailey were just running a rush shot all summer and it was awesome? And then they decided we must break them up and feud them over a month and then they just split apart and now Bailey doesn't need anything for WrestleMania. Even though she will. But we're going to make sure that Billy Kay and Carmella end up tag team champions. Alright. Roman Reigns, Edge, and Daniel Bryan. Anybody have a prediction here? I want to hear yours first. Jim? I don't know. This is kind of a pick em. As far as that goes, um, you know, I don't know if they have anybody really ready for Roman Reigns. Um, should he retain? So I'll just go with Edge, but it could be any of them. 
Mike? I'll go, I'll, I'll go Daniel Bryan, actually. I'll go Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan can get one over on Roman Reigns, even though it doesn't happen to be in a one-on-one match. So if they want to morph history as they do video packages as you go along the line, you can do that. Plus, you can get Roman Reigns and Edge out of this deal if you want to keep going with that. Edge, Daniel Bryan. Edge, Roman Reigns. You want to put Seth Rollins in the mix. Uh, Cesaro. Cesaro, again, you know, if yeah. Cesaro wins and gets the victory over Seth, you can put him in the mix either against Edge or Reigns. Or, look, yeah. there's a lot you could do here, and it's not cut and dry. And I think they did add, you know, this has not been the best build for this either, obviously, uh, with what they've done. But it actually has given me a little bit more of a question mark going into the show. So uh, we have that going for us. So I- I'll actually go Daniel Bryan here, and I have no idea what comes next, but why not? Well, I am uh, I am picking Edge because it's actually the only storyline they've got that's got like a 10-year build and it makes sense. And the problem is they mess it all up by turning Edge heel. Now, who cares? <laughs> like, I mean, I guess he can win the title and then brag that he got it back and everything like that. But that's not even the, the, the good story would have been as a baby face. He comes back and he wins a title that he never lost. And they screw the whole thing up. So I guess you could give it to Daniel Bryan for the happy ending. I mean, I guess you could give it to Roman Reigns, but Roman Reigns has ruined everybody on the roster. Like, who's left? If he wins this match, well, we just do a bunch of rematches with both guys. I guess you could do that. But, I mean, the story, the 10-year build is for Edge winning the title as a babyface on this show, and they messed it up. So I don't care. We got Asuka and Rhea Ripley. Rhea's got to win. So I predict Rhea. Rhea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no I mean, question. anybody anybody waiting for that big Oscar win here? I mean, it can happen. Anything can happen. But I think Rhea needs to win this title. Agreement? Yeah. Agreed. All yeah, right. I'll save that one for last. Big E and Apollo <laughs> Crews in a Nigerian drum battle. I will go first. I mean, Apollo Crews has wrestled this guy for like six months has never beaten him and can't. I think he's going to win the title here as a heel in WrestleMania because oh, why not? Yeah. That's why it's some sort of gimmick match whatever the whatever the drums are, so Hey, w- Wale yeah. gets to, to to sing Big E's theme music, so I'll have that going for him. But, I mean, my God, it's it's a Nigerian drum math, match, right? It's got to be. <laughs> if it's not Apollo Crews, after coming up short all of these times, changing his gimmick, seeing Coming to America 2, and then getting a match that's all set up for him, if he doesn't win, at what point then what do you do with Apollo Cruz unless he's going to be running around on 24 you know for the 24/7 title so he better win this match we have got Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn with Logan Paul i think it's patently obvious that uh, Kevin Owens beats Sami Zayn after Logan Paul knocks out Sami Zayn anyone have any uh any uh debate yeah, one would think so. Uh, Pat LeBrod, who's a great uh, historian, wrote a great article. He said, search out. Um, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens have, according to them, wrestled seven to 800 times. So this is sort of a culmination of their relationship um, to be able to do this match. But yeah, one would think Kevin Owens wins with help from Logan Paul. You know, we've got two great generational rivalry matches in a couple of days, you know, with Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole, you know, maybe coming to an end for a while, you know, their whole generational rivalry that they've had. And then obviously what's gone on with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. I hate the fact that Logan Paul's involved. I hate the Paul family. Or isn't he fighting Ben Askren as one of them? I don't know. Regardless, uh, I think Kevin Owens gets the victory here. And uh, again, I don't like all the seasoning that they have around it, but you know, the match itself is going to be damn good because it always is. Riddle versus Sheamus for the whatever title this is, U.S. title. I mean, I I think that Sheamus is getting the title. I mean, he may not get it here at this show. They could always have Riddle win tonight, and then Sheamus wins on Raw. They want to do something big on Raw after WrestleMania every uh, every year. So uh, I'll predict Riddle, even though I think Sheamus wins it within the month. And we'll get everyone else's thoughts on this and uh, the final match after the break. Observer Live.
Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sembravivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. The Pacific Northwest Heavyweight Champion Jim Valley is joining oh, yeah. us here today. The champion of recovery as well. All right. Here's the uh, belt. Look I at that, everybody. Of your belt, so I had to get my own. Look at that. So beauty. I got a replica of the uh, famous Northwest belt. You know what's got on it, by the way? A winged eagle. Oh, you stuff. Although it's I got love the totem design. eagle, yeah. Yeah. Hey, who's going to win Riddle and Sheamus, Jim? Uh, I agree with you that Sheamus will get the belt. It's kind of a thing that WWE does where a guy will lose the way he lost a bunch of times to McIntyre and then get rewarded with a lesser title. So um, I'll say Sheamus wins at WrestleMania. If not, he'll win on uh, Raw. But I'll go with Sh I'll go with Sheamus. And what about you, Mike? Yeah, I think Sheamus gets the victory, so I don't know what they do with him after that. There's a lot you could do, but I, again, my idea about the Damien Priest thing, I think I, I like that going forward for both guys. All right, and finally, he very quickly, it's a wrestling match. Ugh. The Fiend and Randy Orton. Ugh. What hold and who is going to win? I predict the Fiend wins with the Mandible Claw. Wait, no, the whatever's move is. The Sister Abigail. That's my prediction. What about you, Jim? What hold is he going to use? that the fans lose no matter what. Yet again, one of the most boring matches in WrestleMania. Let's have it be a rematch. Um, sure, The Fiend wins, but it's gonna stink up the joint like it always does. Uh, Mike, very quickly. I hope they go back into the dark recesses of John Cena's mind. That's the only thing that'll make this salvageable. I'll go The Fiend. <laughs> hey, one go. more, by the way, before we go. Are the fans gonna cheer or are they gonna boo this match out of the building? <laughs> I say boo. What about you, Jim? Definitely boo. What about you, boo. Mike? Boo. Uh, boo. We'll find out soon, won't we? <laughs> hey, we're out of time, everybody. We'll be back Sunday with more with our pre-show for WrestleMania. A lot of great stuff coming up. Thanks, Mike, as always. Jim Valley, Twitch homies, everybody listening, the Mightier 1090 Sports Byline. Everybody in the studio, we'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.